Hi everyone, it's Maria. Welcome to Life in Yakutia channel. If you haven't watched my previous video about forest fires uh, yet, I recommend you to do it now before you watch this video to have complete understanding of the situation with wildfires in Yakutia. Today I want to tell you about how I worked as a volunteer during forest fires in Yakutia. As you know, this summer we had like probably one of the biggest forest fires in our history and for now more than eight and a half million hectares of forest are burned. I worked as volunteer uh, for days from 12th to 15th of August. If you open the, the website Zoom Earth, it's a photograph of the world from the satellite and you can see the how actually big fires were those days in Yakutia. I went to the village Tastag, which is located in 40 kilometers from um, my village where my parents live. This village was in danger of getting burned those days. Fire was very close to that, to that village. Talking about this village, Tastag, uh, it's pretty small. Around 300 people live there. But um, there is one interesting th thing about this village. Uh, most of people that live there are farmers. They raise a special breed of cow, Saha cow. This uh, breed of cow is in danger of extinction. Around only one or two thousand heads are left now, like are alive. And more than 200 of them live in that village. So this village is special. I, I went to that village to help as a cook and dishwasher. I didn't go there as a volunteer firefighter because um, well, I'm not really strong. When we came to the village, um, the smoke was so, so, so thick. And uh, we couldn't see people on the streets because um, the village was evacuated. Um, only those who can work at fires and those who cannot live because of their farm, for example, they stayed in the village and many citizens left. There were around 300 uh, firefighters. Half of them were professional and these professional firefighters were from other regions of Russia, mostly from Moscow. And uh, half of them were volunteer firefighters who are just normal people with their jobs and families and that's just their life but who wanted to help our job was to cook food for these people and to wash dishes after them and it was my first experience of cooking for such a big amount of people and we were working with shifts but working like the kitchen should be open 24 hours uh, per day because some uh, these firefighters were working in small groups in different places and they were coming in different time some of them could come for example at 2 a.m because i was too anxious i couldn't sleep and i worked for 24 hours and it was a really nice experience because i could really see the complete picture of how firefighters camp works. This kitchen where we were working, it's actually, of course, it's not made for 300 people. It's just a normal house. We were mm, cooking different uh, food, starting from mm, pancakes <laughs> and of, of course to uh, soups, side dishes, and all food was sent by like charity people from other villages were sending food to this one so 
firefighters have something to eat. What is more, local women that stayed there, they also uh, were bring, they were cooking at home and bringing food to firefighters. Yeah, I think it's very nice of them. I really liked this atmosphere of working all together against one big calamity. We all were united. And I also uh, w was happy to be part of it because I could see that firefighters were coming back from fires they were very very tired i would say they were exhausted after a whole day of work it was really hard physically and mentally to work on these fires and food always make people feel better yeah i was just happy to be part of it so firefighters were coming to the canteen seeing us waiting for them with food they were just yeah they cheer up a little bit and the women that i worked with were actually really nice and i learned a lot from them um, because some of them actually are cooks and they know how to cook how to cook for big amounts of people and yeah it was interesting experience for me because we were working whole day like 24 hours i could actually feel the whole atmosphere of that place even though we were all you know together and somehow united we also were very anxious most of the time because of the because fire was so close and not only people but also the animals and birds Animals and, and birds are more sen sensitive than humans. At night, dogs were howling really loudly. Because, of course, they were scared too. On the next day, I was lucky to, to join firefighters and to actually see how fires in Yakutia are stopped. I went with a small group of firefighters. Again, half of them were um, professional firefighters with good equipment and half of them were volunteer firefighters. And yeah, their equipment was, wasn't really good because, you know, everything they have is come from volunteer organization from charity being there at the fire was very difficult um, physically like it's very difficult it's a hard work for everyone and mentally it was very hard to see our forest being burned and to see the animals running away sorry <laughs> running away from the fire and I realized that fire, being a firefighter is really difficult job like I never really thought about that and it's really difficult job and it's really harmful for health smoke there was so so thick I, my eyes always were watery, you know, like I couldn't stop it. And even though I had mask, it was a really simple one and it couldn't stop the smoke from breathing the smoke. Yeah, after a whole day on the fire, I actually felt really, I don't know, I didn't feel really good. It was really difficult. I just want to add that all firefighters are real heroes. They are not only spending time working there, they are also risking their life and health. I believe that this smoke has real damage, real bad impact on people's health. This fire that we were working with was 16 kilometers long. 
how actually people stop this fire. All professional firefighters had the backpacks with water and some volunteers do, not, not all of them, some of them had this um, backpacks with water. It's 15 liters of water and they have like just a little tube and you like splash this water to the fire. And then um, 15 liters, it's, it's heavy, but it's not that much. Like, and you, you know, you splash all the water, 15 liters, and then you come back to this um, car with a water tank and you fill it again with water and then you go again and splash it with water and it splashes really fast yeah and uh, those who didn't have these backpacks with water they had shovels and spades they were digging the soil and throwing to the fire yes and this is how at least where I worked fires were stopped one more thing which is also really important is that um, firefighters were making a road in the forest that uh, stops the fire this road actually works really well at least they say and in that village where I was there was one driver of bulldozer he was alone and he because his job was so so important he was working 24 hours and he didn't sleep for two or three days he was working like almost non-stop there was no one who can you know shift with him the second driver came after two or three days after that and i really felt sorry for this man who worked two or three days with no sleep his eyes were so so tired but it was the reality yeah it, it was like a chaos you know very chaotic but overall eventually almost all fires are over mm. of course thanks to those who worked against forest fires but also because of the uh, weather we already had the first snow in some regions that village Tastach wasn't burned so the work that firefighters did actually helped but many people farmers they lost uh, their hay and their like meadows where they harvest and some farmers lost their machinery for harvesting like tractors and losing tractor is a big thing because tractors are expensive it can be like 10, 10 years of savings I received a few donations from this kind people thank you guys and I will transfer all amount to those who uh, suffered from forest fires and some of you were asking how can you help and if you guys uh, want to help you can donate to my paypal all amount that I will receive in September I will transfer to people that suffered from forest fires to farmers that lost hay to farmers that lost machinery this summer truly was difficult for all people in Yakutia and I want to thank you guys for your kindness and for your compassion to our calamity. Thank you for watching and I hope that you are safe and sound.